Ok, so this is the individual instead, so we have explored territory <coughs> and unexplored territory, or the known and the unknown, or order and chaos, and then we have the thing that mediates between them, and that's the individual, and this is an old medieval representation which I really love you know, there's the dome of the sky there, it's a very archaic idea that the earth is a dome because it kind of looks like that if you go out in a flat field, you know, if you're out in the ocean the, the, the world looks like a dome on a disc and so that's sort of the representation here, it's a very ancient idea and this guy at the bottom left of the picture is poking his head through the comprehensible world and looking at the chaos beyond and so he's a heroic figure so, the knower is the individual, is always the hero of a story, right? The protagonist of a story. Now, it can be an anti hero, too, because just like the known has a negative element and a positive element, and the unknown has a negative element and a positive element, the individual has a negative element and a positive element. And so there's the hero and the adversary, roughly speaking. And, you know, there's all sorts of movies where the protagonist is an anti hero, you know, and those movies are usually there to show you bad examples in some sense. Or you get mixed characters like Batman, eh? And he's tangled up with the Joker, and as the Joker points out in that brilliant performance, they're mirror images of one another. And so, the Joker's an adversary. It's, it's, it's more complicated than that. But, so, some of the symbols that commonly represent the individual in symbolic representations are, well, and also conceptual representations are ego, consciousness, the trickster, Bugs Bunny is a good example of a trickster the fool, the hero, the coward, spirit as opposed to matter or as opposed to dogma the son, the son of the unknown, and the son of the king so, and those are very very common figures, and I'll walk you through some of that as we progress today so, and then there's the figure of the adversary, so you see on the right hand, left hand side there you see Horus who's the bird-headed god of Egypt, who I told you about, who represents the capacity to pay attention very important concept, because the Egyptians realized, and really it's brilliant, it is something modern people do not understand because we tend to make rationality the highest god that's, that's not a good thing, it, that's a pathway to totalitarianism what the Egyptians knew, but they only knew it in symbolic form was it was the capacity to attend to things that in some sense was the highest psychological function because it's the capacity to pay attention that actually moves you beyond what you only know and rationality tends to make, you know, integral systems that are coherent that are box-like and then claim that they're absolutely right whereas attention is always looking beyond what you know and, and attention is an unbelievably powerful force you know, that's why advertisers pay for it that's why people demand it that's why children can't live without it that's why it's what you want from your friends and your family you want them to pay attention to you, it's an unbelievably valuable resource and so, one of the things I always tell my clients, for example, if they're socially anxious I say, look, pay more attention to the person you're talking to if you, pay, if you really pay close attention to them, then the thoughts that are making you anxious will be suppressed and because you're paying close attention to them, you'll match your movements to theirs and you'll match your conversation to them and then there's no reason for you to be socially anxious because socially anxious people will go like this when they're talking you know, they don't want to look at you of course, how the hell can you engage anyone if you're not in a little dance with them? you know, you can't, and a lot of it's non-verbal, it's physical and it's embodied and without paying attention then you lose people, and you see this with speakers all the time too, they're in front of audiences they have their paper and they're going like this and usually they're talking like this too and you know, the logical thing to do in that case is like look at Facebook or get the hell out of there or something but they're not paying attention to the audience and so there's no power in the, there's no power in the dynamic conversation at all so, 